Hey guys, welcome to my next part of my Dominions um, tutorial. So we've covered the basics, uh, but now we're going to play the game. As I explained before, I cannot expand into underwater provinces. That is because my troops and commanders cannot breathe underwater. Um, now, there are underwater nations you can play, that play underwater. Um, but the problem is... I need a commander that can give my troops the ability to breathe underwater, to take underwater provinces. Just because, and there are items spells that do that, but because I've just started, I can't do it. So I can only expand into these two provinces. To be honest, it's quite a bad start here um, because I'm walled in by the river. And the problem is now, there's 90 units in this province. Heavy infantry, militias, and archers, which I don't want to fight. And this one's got 60, so this is my best bet. So I need to build up my army a bit more. Now, if I go into my army setup, um, I've added my new archers to my unit. It's got 35 archers, and I need some more, gr some more ground troops, frontline troops. So if we recruit some more axe warriors. I'll do about two turns worth. Now if we look at our um, Commander Wulkan now. He's now the Prophet. And you can see there, the little Prophet icon. It gets increased attack and defence in addition to Dominion related bonuses, which, there, which is there, reinvigoration. So he recovers fatigue each turn. Fatigue's um, something to do with not taking critical hits, I think. Which is uh, really useful to have. Critical hits can hurt. He's also a priest now, level three priest, and blessed because he's the prophet. That means he, a priest can basically cast priest spells, which is completely separate to magic. Um, and one of the most useful is, is blessing his sacred units. Um, but for now, we we need to build more units. Also, my uh, shaman is up and about. Now he has. The research ability, which is level nine, so he adds nine points to the research. So we've got research income, income of nine now, basically. So we'll set him to research, and maybe recruit another one, or, or actually recruit a warrior priest, a warrior of Smith. Sorry. So if we enter turn, get a few more troops. Add the troops. So we've got 30, 50, 60 troops now. That might be enough to take the province. There's my smith, he has a forge bonus, I think. It's basically when you create an item, it'll cost you less gems. I'll show you that now. So if once you create it, a magical item, and we'll click the commands, select forge magic item. Um, we haven't got much to choose from at the moment. We have a fire sword. Oops, sorry, fire sword. If you right click, it'll show you a bit of more information about each um, magic item. Axe of sharpness. We can build that, so we'll build the axe of sharpness in a minute. Two handed sword, shields, helmets, armor, boots, and trinkets. So for now, we'll build an axe of sharpness um, to give our commander here. Right. I said before, your dominion, represented by candles. Now my dominion is spread here. White candles represent my dominion. Black cam candles represent enemy dominion. It's spreading at the moment. Maybe he, it's still quite low here, three. So my commander's not doing anything, so I might as well choose preach teachings of God, which any priest unit can do. That spreads dominion in any province to do that. I'll also, while I'm at it, show you how to cast a spell and you can cast a ritual spell there's nothing at the moment to choose from but that's how you summon a summon units or cast um, spell other spells like you can shoot things to other provinces or teleport to other provinces the moment i can't do any any of them because i haven't researched anything so we'll just um, keep researching for now so we'll click research keep on researching now it's very important to keep making units with research to the point where you got like a whole page full of them, because you need you need more, more, more research as 
um, the game goes on because every time you research and level goes up the research cost gets higher and higher and higher okay let, we'll um, make sure we're recruiting more units one more turn We should have enough now to take this, uh, this province. Actually, it's there's only 40 enemy units in it now. There, now there, so it'll be really easy to take. So, what we do is we'll click our uh, commander and click the province, and the arrow represents he's marching there. Also, move a scout a bit further forward to look uh, further on. And the turn. Now, now there has been a battle in the province we just moved to. So, if we click that, it'll tell us the outcome. So, the province previously owned by independence has been conquered by our forces. It'll tell you the casualties. So, the forces of Ulm, which is our army, six axe warriors died, um, where their army was completely defeated. And if you want to, you can view the battle. This is really good for seeing if your tactics are working and what went wrong if you if you lost the battle <coughs> that's our army there and um, unfortunately can't command your units in battle it's all done automatically in dominions this is probably the only thing our problem with dominions is that you can't command your own armies it's all done aut automatically As in the map mode, you can right click any unit and have a look at it. So, they're deer tribe archers. Nothing special. And we can see our archers peppering while our front lines charging. These axe warriors can throw axes as well, as we just saw. There's our commander there at the back. He can fight if he wants to, but it's best if we stay back. If he gets killed, um, I'll explain. I'll explain um, the uh, pitfalls of your commander dying in a minute. So well, as you can see, um, we know the battle's won anyway. But you can see how it panned out in real time if you want to. So that province's been taken, and my flag or my banner is up in that province, and I own it now. So any income is um, in my treasury as well as I should when I recruit units get an extra resource income because I've got a neighbouring province which I have and my scout has gone forward and we see that that province is going to be easy to take 20 units and 40 units for barbarians and that will be easy to take as well now as I said before um, when you have a battle um, as we know Our commander is the sole commander of these two platoons here. Now, if your commander dies, or if he routes, your whole army will run off, which is which is a real pain. Now, what happens when your army runs off? Usually, your army will get scattered to all the different provinces, um, and if your commander gets killed, that's even worse, because especially if it's a commander. Um, that's gained experience, skills, and items, and then items, items can be taken by other nations. Um, and it's always a blow to lose a commander. So usually, it's best to leave commander in the back ranks to start with, not have them fighting. When you get more commanders, and um, there's a lot, a lot of different commanders in the game, some you can just use commanders on their own to fight. Um, you'll have the option for them to wade in with magical items, and they can be quite strong. And then there is um, a strategy in the game. Um, called super combatants um, is where you have commander units fitting with um, various powerful magical artifacts and you can take whole armies on by yourself and that's a bit more advanced if you just start and play the game now we've taken the province and um, before I did mention defense now defense is like a local um, militia defense now if I move my army out um, that that province will be undefended. So if I move him to take that province, that army, that province will be undefended. So if you click the defense tab, you can pump gold into raising the defense level. 
Now, the more defense levels you have, the more units will be guarding. Now, if we pump up to level 20, you can see you'll have various commanders, archers, and um, warriors. Now, your militia, the militia defense will always be the units you can recruit on that tile. So, D tribe warriors, D tribe archers um, are what we're defending. Um, now, your militia you cannot, it's not an army you can control, it's just the local defense. So, it's not there, it's just defending. So, if someone, it's, it's used for casual um, attacks by other nations. It can stop some smaller armies, but a large army, um, usually local defense, won't be strong enough to uh, tackle it. So let's recruit some more units. Let's get an Atlas Shaman this time. He'll take two turns to build. Um, we'll build some Shield Maidens, are a bit tougher on my, my Axe Warriors, which are quite weak. We'll queue him for a few turns. So don't forget. There was a battle in, in the Mesian marshes. Uh, we defeated the enemy army. Only one casualty, which was good. Right, and then we'll just take this um, mountain town here. Keep recruiting commanders and I'll ask some more archers as well as shield maidens. Right, I'll set my, my smith to uh, researching. Number 10. Right, my research and construction is completed, so I've got level and construction. So next level, construction, less magical items. But for now, I'll, uh, I'll get my evocation up, uh, so I can get um, some of this attack magic here for my mages. Now, if you right click your um, army, and go into army setup. There is another another thing you can do, which is set battle orders. So you can can actually influence what your unit, what your platoons do. So you set battle orders for your archers. They can just um, attack, uh, which is basically try and engage in melee. Obviously, archers fire, um, which is their default one anyway. Is one that was called guard commander, so you can set bodyguards to commander, so to make sure they don't get get killed. Um, you can have your squad um, hold off. Um, we can have them fire and keep the distance and retreat. If you have a mage, so the animal chain in here, which I just built, which is our best mage. He's the level 2 Earth Mage and level 2 Nature Mage. If we um, go in Army Setup again, give him Battle Orders, because he's a Mage, you can ask him to hold off casting a spell or cast specific spells he knows, like Blessing or Banishment, which is used for Destroy Undead or cast a specific spell like flying shards or sleep touch. So if you want to set like a specific strategy with what spells are cast at the start, um, that's how you do it. And he has the usual main orders cast spells, which is his default one anyone to be honest. So right, what are we doing now? We'll keep expanding. Now we've got 50 here, 30 there, so we'll go there. Right, I'm recruiting units still. Let's recruit some sacred units. Not always the best thing to do at the start, but... There's a few strong units. There's no, there's no other nations around at the moment. Yeah, you'll know when another nation appears. Um, you'll see another coloured coloured banner. 
Now, in Dominions, there is no diplomacy at all, so you can't negotiate with any other nations because basically it's like an Armageddon war. It's last man standing. Um, so, if you do see another nation, you can't expect them to attack you. Generally, if you attack them first, they do tend to attack back. Um, and I'm less likely to attack if, you, if you're aggressive, I find. Um, and when you do get um, an, another nation on your door, on your borders, always make sure you've got your defence levels up. So they don't just... Because if it's undefended, they will just take your provinces. Let's go next turn. So back on the Greater Wild. Oh, took heavy losses. 11x warriors died. But we killed all their archers and warriors and etc. Axe warriors seem, do seem quite weak. Unexpected event. I've got some more mate, um, nature gems. Okay. Let's keep the research going. Expanding now. I might right. I was on about magic sites before, and that we need to find them now. To find them, you need to get a mage, any mage. But the higher the magic skill, the better. So I, I get my antlered mage. I move into a province. And I'll next turn, I'll show you how to find magic sites. We need uh, more gem production. What are we doing now? That's it, isn't it? Battle in FC Bor or FC Bor. Yeah, I've lost more Axe Warriors again. But still one. So now we need to. I need, re I need reinforcements. So he can move two tiles at a time. Some some commanders and armies can move more than one one um, province at a time, like this one. Usually, if there's a mountain or a wood, he'll bar you. But he has got survival, uh, mountain walking and and forest walking. It also depends on the troops as well. If you, if all your troops are stealthy, and your commander stealthy, your whole army will be, it'll be stealthy. It's the same for like mountain walking and forest walking. Right, got our shamans waiting in this province, so we need to find magic sites. What you do is, we'll search for magic magic sites, and if he's successful, which is you generally on your, your level of your magic, you'll find magic sites appropriate to the level of his magic, and usually the gem producing sites. Any more frontline troops? Some more shield maidens. And next thing it'll tell you the results of your magic um, searching. Um, so, success. So, Arbador has found a magic site in Turia. An ancient temple. And evocation is finished. So let's research some summons now. Conjuration. An unexpected event. to I've lost some gold. So, the magic site, an ancient temple. So we click the magic site tells where it is. So we get one astral pearl a turn. So that's what one gem produces, but I don't need astral pearls to be honest. So I don't have any astral mages. So let's move, keep moving our commander down to get reinforcements. We'll, tr we'll try to take this um, heavily defended province. At the dormant pretender gods are awakening, so my um, pretender god should appear soon. Oh, he has awakened. So there we go. There he is, as our forge lord. 31 research is really good. He's, he's high magic paths. So he can, he can forge magic item now. Um, he can make. Armour. 
full steel plate from my commander. So I'll make a separate unit for my sacred warriors. Oh, plus two morale now. Inspirational commander. Oh, that's, that's because he's got a heroic ability now. Because he's in that. Because he's one of the best um, commanders in the game in the, in the map in the game in the moment. So he's in the hall of fame. So he gets heroic ability. So he's got valor, which increases my morale. Inspirational now, look. Always keep checking on you on what builds is that they do change. Okay, we'll we'll do one more turn, get some more units and then we'll attack that that province. Magic site was found. A random event. Where was that? Oh, yeah, wild forest. Oh, nature gem return. Do we need nature gems and earth gems? So, what we'll do this time, we'll send a mage. with them as well for magic backup so we'll march in my pretend researching always keep recruiting units it's always good to keep a good constant supply units might make a new commander as well so I can uh, drop off units Conjuration is finished, so we'll keep our construction up. So the battle in Hall Woods. And to be honest, we took very little casualties in that battle. Have a quick look at it. Now we've got a mage. Should be casting spells in the background. Oh, actually, I did make a mistake with my mage. I'll explain in a minute what I just did, which probably you will do as well. Now I did send my mage into the province, but he isn't fighting in the battle, and there is a good reason why. Yep. Also found a magic item, Ring of Frost, in that battle. Now, when I moved my mage, remember he he has stealth, like a spy. Now, if you move move into another province, it automatically sneaks. Now, if you want the sneaky unit to fight, you have to press Control and click, and it'll move instead of sneaking. And that's what I just did. We'll leave him there. Have him search for magic sites. There's his ring of frost. Actually, I should have equipped the items I built before. Oh, this one's got um, a sacred place you can claim. Claim Frame of Ascension. Um, it, some maps have like special things like this on. This one does. And so we'll, we'll stay here and have them claim, claim the Frame of Ascension, which is like a special building. Keep recruiting units. Some more archers. Right, what we'll do now is we'll, we'll, we'll summon some monsters. So if we if we cast ritual spell, we can summon ogres. This one can summon wolves and ogres. 
Let's just let's just bang some ogres out. Yeah, that'll do. Let's claim the crystal throne. Let's claim the throne of beasts. That's a different character, different nation. Um, two magic sites were found. That's good. So what did we find here? Ge um, it, nature and fire, gem production, and death and nature. All right, the crystal throne. The throne must be claimed to gain the family effect. Spreads dominion. Produces one. Earth and one astral enables recruitment of crystal mage. So what's a crystal mage? There's the crystal mage. I need to build a lab there so we can recruit it. So what we'll do is I want crystal mages because we have very limited uh, mage mages in Ulm. They don't have a very um, good variety of mages to choose from. We'll build a. Uh, so if we can construct building, we can either build a fortress, a lab or a temple. You never build a fortress next to a fortress, it's just a castle next to a castle, it's just stupid. Because um, you need the surrounding provinces for extra resources in your castle. So we'll build a lab so we can recruit mages in that province. Now, there are all the ogres we summoned. We'll move our um, profit back. Get the items and ogres. Still no sign any other na nations yet. It's because we started down the corner. Right. right. If we right click our commander, we'll give him the axe we built and the armor. And then we can see him there. And we'll give him the ogres as well. Now, I've got too many squads. So I'll merge my ogres with my sacred units. Not too many squads affection morale. Same as you mix some certain units together, they don't like it, but they're fine together. Ogres are pretty strong. Say so same as my uh they can be my heavy they can be my heavy uh, infantry squad. Uh, Ulm doesn't have any cavalry. You have cavalry in this game as well. Um, we have yet to see any cavalry. Okay, I should be able to recruit crystal mages now. So let's recruit a couple of crystal mages. And we'll keep searching for magic sites as well. And that's basically just the game. Um, obviously, later you will meet other nations, and that's when you'll it'd be more difficult because uh, you have to defeat their armies as well as well as you can be attacked from different sides. And then you have to deal with underwater nations. So you'll need items that allow you to go in the underwater, or units like amphibious units that can be on land and water. Uh, but basically you get water breathing, I think it's like a water breathing item that will you give you commander and that allows you to um, go into an underwater, underwater nation. Same with the un if you're playing an underwater nation, you'll need an item that allows you to breathe on land or amphibious units to attack land. Um, it's a whole different game when you play an underwater nation. It is a bit more advanced um, when, you play, when you play an underwater one. And that's basically just the game. Now, what you want to do is just keep expanding, conquering, spreading the, your dominion, um, making larger armies. Um, you'll get better ritual spells um, that can affect the whole game. Um, and bigger summons, um, big units you can use. Um, so you can strengthen your commanders with um, better equipment etc. There's many different things you can try and as, as I say there's lots of different different um, units to fight and use. And it's a very deep game. It's a, 
and there's, there's a lot of re um, replayability. There's a multiplayer on it as well. I've never, to be honest, I've never played the multiplayer, but obviously playing against human opponents will be a lot more challenging than playing against the AI. The AI, AI in this game isn't really that hard. Um, they do tend to send blobs of armies against you. It is a bit better than Dominion's 3 AI, which was just not good, to be honest. But to be honest, the game's that fun, because you have that much fun um, trying different strategies out. Um, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. And that's basically it. So I hope you enjoyed my two, two videos I made. Um, any questions, you can ask me on the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.